It's World Architecture Day on Monday, and the South African profession says beautiful buildings can shape the world. The South African Architects Council says COVID-19 highlights the importance of architects in building healthy working and living spaces. To talk more about this, I'm joined by Nsidiso Nduku, President of the South African Council for the Architectural Profession. Thank you very much for your time this Sunday afternoon. So can you tell us how has COVID-19 changed the ways that we need to look at creating work and home spaces that allow for uh, easier flow of space, for more more social distancing, we can foresee that uh, something like COVID-19 or possibly other pandemics will be with us for some time and that changes the environments that, that shape our world. Yes, thank you very much for having me. Yes, the COVID-19 has had uh, quite a huge impact on how the architects will have to reconfigure that design uh, theory and also to look at um, the configuration of the public spaces. Uh, that we in public spaces there's always a lot of people <clears throat> now we have to look into um, to try and uh, respond to social distancing i think we can learn from uh, french baroque gardens which uh, are actually we can use as buffer zones to actually uh, uh, respond to social social distancing and also um you know because of the the, the issues of the the mobility you know we have to respond to, 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 to emergencies, and then we must uh, consider looking at, <coughs> at, at using the lightweight structures, the structures that can be prefabricated and, 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 and flexible partitions that can be moved uh, quickly, can change, you can put it together and, 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 and change the space to respond to the, to the issues uh, that have been created by the COVID-19. Mm. And also, I mean, um, if you're looking at the cities, I mean, the cities, are actually based on the densities. Urban designers must rethink notions of density as a sustainable approach to grow, to grow and expand cities. Um, so now we have to look uh, at how uh, at the, the, the notion will change and how uh, that can be changed now because the, the, the COVID-19 has really uh, created some kind of a shift in, in, in mindset. Hmm. It might be World Architecture Day, but in the South African context, we also have to look at what role transformation is playing and how architects um, have the ability to mold spaces um, within the South African and African context. Yes. Yes, the, uh, yeah, there is a huge role for architects to play in that space uh, in terms of uh, molding the transformed to transform the, the architectural space uh, because of the apartheid legacy and we have uh, social uh, a special injustice that needs to be uh, uh, dealt with uh, by by just uh, configuring reconfiguring the, 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 the spaces uh, architects will play a big role in in, in, in changing and transforming the the, the, the space yeah, with and, and, and architecture responding to to those spaces because what has happened um, in the past, the the, 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 the urban uh, uh, you know uh, planning has created this uh, segregated city, where you have urban centres um, away from the the, 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 the the accommodation or the, 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 the housing, and people have to use transport uh, a lot of money uh, spend uh, on transport to to travel from the, the the spaces where they stay to to the city, and that is hitting the poor people most and. Uh, it has to really be re-looked at and then we need to actually take that energy uh, and, and opportunities that are actually presented by our cities and, and to try and pull that energy, that energy into, into, into the areas where poor people are, are, are staying. Uh, basically what we need to look at it now is to uh, have an integrated uh, society in terms of uh, the space uh, where we don't have people that are, are staying in certain area because they are earning uh, a certain living they are low living so they are condemned to rtp houses and then the ones of those above those are condemned to social housing and then you have uh, uh, suburbs on the other side so we need to integrate our society mm -hmm. through the planning and then architecture can really play and then urban design can play a big role in really reconfiguring our, our cities mm -hmm. to to be um, transformed 
post lockdown uh, we have to look at job creation and the construction industry is one area of huge potential for job creation but simultaneously we also need to look at climate change and the impact of construction on uh, biodiversity and climate change and trying to use green materials where are we in South Africa in terms of uh, measuring ourselves against global best practice Yes, uh, we, we, we have a Green Building Council uh, in, in South Africa that has been um, pioneering uh, in that direction. But, I mean, the green architecture is supposed to be a, a normal way of designing buildings. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we, we should use it as, as a normal practice instead of um, looking at it as an outside um, approach or a standalone approach. Yes, I know for a fact that, I mean, it, it has gained that popularity now that uh, people are talking about green architecture. But, I mean, if you design buildings that are responding to the climate, if you position your buildings, uh, uh, you know, um, very well on site, facing the north, understanding, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the sun path, where the north is, where the south is, where the east is, I think um, it, it, it will encourage uh, it will respond a lot to, to, to that kind of a question, green architecture, rather than using the solar panels and also other gadgets that are expensive. Mm -hmm. And then we call that um, a green architecture. I think, you know, we just need to actually uh, think more and more about, about, about how we design, how we respond to climate, you know, so that at least even materials that we use, we must use materials that are, 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 are reusable, the materials that are not going to uh, create uh, problems. I mean, in terms of pollution, you know, the carbon footprint that we need to reduce, I think is the way uh, that we, we, we need to, to approach our, our designs. And also, I mean, in, in the country, I mean, there is a lot that has happened. Uh, there are buildings there that, that here in the country that are, are having a green star rating. You know, you, you, you get rated to, to, to a green star. So how, how much are you actually um, reducing the carbon footprint? So we have that and then we've been really, uh, uh, you know, involved in, 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 in that kind of practice. Well, thank you very much. That was Nsidiso Ndulko, President of the South African Council for Architectural Profession. So much more than just the facade of a building that goes into the, its architecture.